Thank you so much for taking a moment to uh, listen in to another short episode of From Behind the Pulpit. My intent in these is to give some simple encouragement and some hopeful instructions of some things that you can do personally or uh, as a household before the coming Lord's Day comes about and that you would make plans even now to intentionally be here unless something uh, catastrophic, God-ordained hinders you that it is your plan to gather with the Lord's people on this coming Lord's Day. And so what can you do to prepare yourself for the gathering at 204 Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls, Idaho? Well, some very simple things. So let me encourage you in this. At some point in the next couple of days or in some point before Sunday morning at 1030, gather your household together. So whether it be at a dinner table or sometime just before bedtime that you gather all of the household together. Perhaps it's even early in the morning before everyone scatters and goes it away. But let me speak specifically to the heads of households, so to husbands and fathers. If you're believers and you are leading your household in the ways of the Lord, then let me encourage you to take the headship, take the lead in this, it is your God-ordained position that God has given to you for the blessing of your whole household. Now, if your household doesn't have a believing husband or a believing father, then moms, wives, you're not out of bounds with the permission of your husband to gather your children together, to read the scripture together, and to do this. And so uh, where I may speak specifically and usually to men Primarily, know that this is to anyone who serves as a head of household in a spiritual component, in a spiritual way. So what are some things that you can do to prepare yourself or to prepare your family? And that would be, I mean, my encouragement to you is, in this is that you open up the living, breathing word of God to the book of Philippians chapter 1. And this coming Lord's Day, my intent will be to preach through verses one through 7 of Philippians chapter 1. And so let me encourage you that at some point, at least once, but I would encourage it multiple times, at some point, either at the start or the conclusion of the day, that audibly it is heard, the reading of the word of God in your home. And so perhaps it's at a dinner table. Dad, give an assignment to one of the children that they would read, if they're able to read, that they might read Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. If you don't have reading children in the home yet, then you could assign that to your wife, or even better yet, you could read it yourself out loud for the hearing of your children. Now, regardless of the age of the children, the comprehension of what they're hearing or what they're reading will vary. But don't assume that there's no value in it in your home. And so sit down at some point, multiple times is my greater encouragement to you and hear the reading of Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 through 7 and then follow that up with some simple questions follow it up with asking the question to the household to yourself who wrote this letter and you'll see the answer is plainly in front of you and then ask the question who is the letter written to again it'll be pretty plain it's pretty simple the the the, the apostle, when he writes these letters, he writes it very specifically as to who he's writing to. Make note of, that is, to a group of people in general, and then out of that, he identifies two specific groups of people within the general group. So there's one group of people that he writes to, but inside of that group, he singles them out, asks the question, who is the letter to? To, to, to the whole group, to the specific people in the group of those that he's writing to. So those would be some simple questions you could ask in that. Then may I also encourage you this, make note of, maybe have a second reading of the text and ask the question and make note of how often do you hear the word thanks or thanksgiving or some reference to being grateful, a people of gratitude, the, the apostles feeling of gratitude. And so may just make note of it. What is he thankful for? And what's his attitude? Is, is, his, 
Is his demeanor, is, is his uh, thought process, is it disconnected with everything else that he's saying? Is, is he angry? Is he frustrated? Is he confused? Uh, or is he thankful? Ask that question. You'll see, it. You'll see it as you hear it, as you read it. The tone of it will be pretty clear. And then ask the question, or make note of, how often you're hearing or making note of some form of the word that would relate to grace. Grace is a theme of these first seven verses. And so listen for it, pay attention to it, and when you hear it, what does he say about it? And then also make note, perhaps on a third read-through or a fourth read-through, make note of how often you hear the word the gospel. Gospel. What, what is it about the gospel that he's saying? What is he wanting to communicate? And what, is, what, what will we benefit from hearing the term the gospel? So those are going to be some important things for you in preparing for coming this coming Lord's Day. That'll be the primary thing of what I'll speak about Sunday morning. I don't usually title my sermons ahead of time. Most of my sermons get titled the day after while they're being uploaded to sermonaudio.com and I pull out of that uh, a title from it. And so I'm not real good about uh, having a title on something in advance, but I'm, I'm, tr I'm striving. I'm, I, may not, I may not get it every time, but I, I have a title for this message this week and that is Paul's Prayers for the Good Work of Grace. So that, that's the title of my sermon, and that will be the aim of what I'll be addressing and speaking in. Now, one thing you can do, if you were unable to be here last week, and uh, you want to get in on the introduction, the background information, I'll have a link for this. I, it'll be somewhere around here. I really don't know where I'm pointing and where my finger will be in relationship to that. But there'll be a link for this uh, right over here. You can listen to last week's sermon that gives the introduction, the background information about this about the the city of philippi about the believers in the city who they were uh, and paul's relationship with them i think it would be really helpful for you if you miss that or if you want to just reference it you could go and uh, familiar refamiliarize yourself with that as well so what else can you do what else can you do to make preparations for coming well i would say this make sure that everyone in your household knows today that gathering on the lord's day is the plan Gathering at the church house is the plan of what this family will do on the Lord's Day. So if you were here uh, about three weeks ago, or uh, if you were unable to be here three weeks ago and you picked these up last week, don't forget that I have these home guide studies for the book of Philippians. If you, if you were unable to be here and you've not been able to be here, we'll have some of these available Sunday and you can pick these up. But in here is... Uh, a, uh, several songs and over the course of our time in the, in the book of Philippians you're going to learn some new songs at church you're going to sing some familiar songs but one song we're going to sing every week at the conclusion the last song we sing together is a song entitled the gospel doxology the law gospel doxology it's to a familiar tune uh, the doxology but listen to the words of this and so let me encourage Hey, are there any piano players in your home or any guitar players in your home or any instrumentalist? Maybe appoint one of the children or a spouse or you yourself sit down and begin to teach this song to your children, to your household. We, remember, we want the soundtrack of the home to be the, so, to be the songs of the faith. And so I encourage this in a great way. This song, the Law Gospel Doxology, it's, it's, listen to the words of it. It says, your perfect law exposes me. I feel my sin and desperate need. My best good works are powerless to satisfy your righteousness. Verse two, but there is one who lived for me, his life, my only victory, his death for every uh, forever sealed in time that I am his and he is mine. And then that familiar tune of the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. 
Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We'll conclude our time this coming Lord's Day with that song again. But begin for that song to be really familiar in your home. Familiarize yourself with it. Make an attempt of singing it. Make an attempt of reading it. Oh, it would be sweet if someone in the home could even play it uh, on an instrument that they're learning. So that's my, my, my encouragement to you for this coming Lord's Day. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I want you to know that I have, I have been praying for you this week. And my prayers from the moment you watch this until the time we gather on Sunday morning on the Lord's Day, December the 11th, that I will be praying for you. I'll be praying for your household, for your children. I'll be praying for an advancement of the gospel into the hearts of men, to all who would gather. I won't know who all's here any, more, any better or any worse than you will when we all gather here together to give praise to the Lord. But this will be for sure, that I'm asking God for whoever he gathers here for that day, that the news of the gospel will be a sweet sound to our ears. Whether you've been a believer for a long time or by the grace of God, it, the conversion of your heart and the embracement of the gospel takes place immediately now. In either case, that we would come a rejoicing people giving thanks to God for his grace and the good works that he's doing through grace in our lives. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you on this coming Lord's Day. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your household. And may the Lord bless the advancement of the gospel to the ends of the earth.